We have already discussed about return. Now it's time to discuss about the concept of risk. So risk is usually associated with the possibility that realized return of security will be less than the expected return. So as we discussed previously, if your expected return is more and your actual return or realized return is less, basically what we are talking about is risk. The reason of such risk is the failure of dividend in case of equity because the return that we get from equity is dividend and the return that we get from debt, a bond, debentures, everything which is non-equity is your interest. So whatever we get as a dividend from risk, uh, dividend from equity and interest from non-equity investment or the securities price to material uh, materialize as expected. So you expected certain amount of dividend, you're not getting it. You expected certain amount of interest from your non-equity investment, you are not getting it. So basically what's happening is risk. It's also from the securities prices to materialize as expected. Whatever, be it your dividend interest or be it your end price or of the or end value of the product, if it is not matching as per your expectations, we say to be falling into the category of risk. Now it's very important to understand how do you know what should be your expected rate of return. So to arrive at expected rate of return, you can see into different opportunity cost. For example, suppose you have invest, invested in product A and product B on the other hand is giving you 10% rate of return. So the minimum rate of return that you can expect from product A is 10%. Hence, your opportunity cost of 10%, that's the return that you'd be getting from product B, becomes the expected rate of return of product A. If product A doesn't, is not able to give you 10% rate of return, what we are talking about is risk. Now we need to understand what are the elements of risk. Generally, the elements of risk can be classified into two broad categories. That is your systematic risk and unsystematic risk. Let's see, let's see them one by one. Some factors are external to the firm and cannot be controlled. For example, interest rate, purchasing power of capacity of a person. So these are not into the control or cannot be controlled by the firm. So this kind of risk will be known as systematic risk because investments, those forces are in investment, those forces are that are uncontrollable, external and broad in their effect are called sources of systematic risk. Now what are the unsystematic risks? Other factors are within the firm and are hence controllable to a large degree. Can it be absolutely controlled? No. But to large extent, yes, it can be controlled. So this controllable internal factors somewhat peculiar to industries and or firms are referred to as sources of unsystematic risk. Now we are going to see and we are going to actually dive into the of broader categories or subcategories of sources of systematic risk and sources of unsystematic risk. To start with, let's see what are the sources of systematic risk. 